Hello, once again this is Al Edlund and we're going to do some more work with the Data Center Rack project using Visio as a front end for working with uh, network and configuration information. Before we get too far into this demonstration, uh, let's put a caution up front. And the caution up front is this portion of the code actively works with the network. So be aware that there are security implement implications and make sure you don't step on anyone's toes. The second piece is that even though a lot of the Windows or Microsoft products that uh, we might work around can in fact support uh, the flows we're going to demonstrate, uh, that does not mean that they have been installed on the boxes in your network nor have they been activated, nor have they been configured. Specifically, when we start looking at uh, things that get involved with, for instance, for SNMP, uh, you have to install it and turn the features on. You have to come into the services and activate the service, and then you have to configure the service not only for some of the information that you might want to query, but also passwords and what devices will be allowed to query the information. So even though this information can give us a lot of what we might require for configurations, uh, there, there's no guarantee that in an active network the devices will be prepared to uh, provide this to us. As we've done before, what we'll do is we'll work through how the application uh, functions and we'll give you a couple of uh, short demos and then we'll step into the code for uh, some of the gotchas. Uh, we've got an example drawing here. Uh, each of our uh, shapes has shape data associated with it and part of that shape data is in fact a, a network name and an IP address. We will work almost exclusively with the IP addresses. We're going to work with three structured flows, ICMP, SNMP, and Windows Management Information. And we'll also work with two unstructured flows. And we're going to do these first because they're the easiest to do. Uh, the first one's a simple Telnet or uh, secure socket handler interface. And the second one's a remote desktop. If we select our top uh, uh, router in this case, and then select uh, Telnet SSH. It opens a session for us and we can work with it. Uh, under the covers, this is a very simple function. It's one line of code uh, attached to the screen operator. Let's close this. For the server, uh, we'll do a remote desktop. And just like the one above it, this is a Very simple piece of code, uh, activates it, and, and from our Visio drawing, we were allowed and, and actually uh, logged on to a server on the network. So pretty quickly, uh, we can go through uh, devices in a rack and verify not just connectivity, which would be a ping type of operation, but communication is the ability to uh, work with it. Let's go back to the top one again. And our address on this one is the loopback address. And we'll start off with pings. Uh, we can do a ping. Uh, we, we have a setup screen. Uh, default is, is we'll ping five times, wait a half a second. Uh, time to live 32 hops. Uh, ping delay in milliseconds is a network friendly delay. Uh, that says so that we don't flood the network with pings. And we can also set up the frame size. Uh, we can do a ping. That's five already. Uh, we can do a function for a stepped ping. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the address to a different device. And a step ping is we'll go through and we will ping different frame sizes to see if our network has a sensitivity to errors or a sensitivity to uh, traffic. 
Uh, it gives us a report back uh, for each of the frame sizes and then draws a graph. Uh, we can, as in the other examples, we've got a report viewer underneath it that will uh, pull the data back. The graph coming back is a minimum delay, an average delay, and a max delay. Uh, in this case, the, uh, uh, we have a ping that was uh, out of sync. Uh, that's not unusual for our first pings, uh, given the uh, startup parameters of, of the TCP IP stack that Microsoft uses. And this, uh, if we click copy chart on this, we'll close this, and it's moved uh, a copy of the chart onto our drawing and we have a line over to uh, the resource we were working with. ICMP also supports a uh, trace route. We can test the path. Before we do the test path, it would do a trace route. But one of the things that we often see is a desire to, uh, how do we check status for devices? And we'll come to this, net status, ICMP update status and what the uh, tool is doing is it's going off and pinging each of the devices based on the address and then it moves the shape to a different layer in the drawing that we've color coded to highlight the status. Uh, in this case green is uh, we've gotten positive responses to our ping and red is a device that didn't respond to the ping. The two other structured data flows that we test with are SNMP and we'll just do a simple route table bring back a route table and we'll close this and we'll also come back and we'll do a WMI flow to gather uh, device data query it and this is the WMI data so we can reach out and touch the device assuming it has been configured and uh, uh, we can pass the security uh, and, and, and grab the data without having to go out on the floor. Let's look at the code for this. We'll close this. The code ad, as in the other projects we have uh, data access uh, definitions. We have the data reports which were built with the um, Visual Studio Report Builder. Uh, we have three custom classes for the data that we're working with. For instance, SNMP results. And these are built based on uh, going into uh, MOF files and uh, as notes in the classes we show the commands necessary to take the uh, ICMP, well, the uh, SNMP data and create classes out of them so we can work with them. Uh, we've got the three forms that we've just uh, demonstrated and we've got the necessary support files to go with it. So hopefully this will save you some bucks for when the boss looks at you and says, nope, I'm not going to buy that new server and that new software, uh, you're going to have to find out a different way to get the data back. You have a great one. This is Al Edlund.